so uh, first live stream of 2019 code related live stream that is uh, so I'm just going to make sure everything's set up and working properly before I get too carried away I uh, just meant to stop the uh, little playback window just in case it interferes with my internet connection uh, I'm also aware that uh, right now typically on Twitch an advert plays so I'm sometimes wondering if people uh, that come for the start of the stream do actually miss all the things that I'm saying right now in which case I could get away with saying anything at all uh, but I won't risk it so if you have come from the YouTube channel or you're watching this on Javid X9 Extra the live streams are a bit different to the regular channel output they're a lot more chaotic uh, mainly because I don't have a plan and people are going to be shouting at me in chat we're going to see bugs we're going to see things going wrong we're going to see ideas that I've not thoroughly thought through uh, for me it's just a bit of a, a creative outlet really uh, so uh, in particular today what we're going to be looking at is uh, collision detection uh, on the uh, top-down city-based car crime game <coughs> ah Stixel dude hello I know we've also got uh, Bendani UDXS I can only see what's uh, in the chat so if you're in the chat shout out say hello uh, and what I'm not going to be doing in this specific video is telling you of the intricacies of the collision detection algorithm. Uh, I'm just going to get that out of the way straight away, uh, simply because it's it's not trivial. I want to keep this fairly light. I want to actually make some progress with something else. So this is very unlike the YouTube channel. It's not me doing tutorials. It's just me talking through uh, the random development that I'm going through. So um, this is... Uh, I know many of you that uh, regularly watch my streams will understand that I have to put this sort of uh, prefix on all of my Twitch streams because uh, sometimes people from the YouTube come over and they don't really understand why it's not like the YouTube channel. And uh, Tutus, thank you for the raid. Thank you very much, party of six. Cyan, hello. Uh, so Tutus has just put on a really good stream, I think. Uh, it was nice uh, to see some uh, some coding going on from Tutus, so well done there. Uh, so most of you will have seen what's on my screen before if you've watched the video. If you've not, I'm working on something called Top Down City Based Car Crime Game. And uh, this is uh, obviously a bit of a, a clone of Grand Theft Auto, the original one, and it's not going to be anywhere near as complicated as Grand Theft Auto. It's really just, it, it, it occurred to me it's a nice vehicle to talk about lots of different algorithms. So we've got Tutus Bird. Sleeping Burr, hello! <laughs> Tutus. <coughs> I've also got a bit of a cough, so periodically I'm going to be coughing quite a bit. But don't worry, because I am sponsored by Bundaberg Root Beer. Uh, I'm not really sponsored by them, I just really like it. So when I'm streaming, I drink root beer, and when I'm making YouTube videos, obviously I drink Vimto. Uh, so what's, let's have a quick look at the chat, what's going on. Twitch giving me advertisements all the time. Uh, yep, yeah, sorry about that. I, I deliberately didn't say anything interesting during the first 30 seconds of the stream. Uh, random game called Car Crime City, Mafia City, Binary Ironclads here, DW Dev, hiya, how you doing? Uh, who would want to be sponsored by Root Beer? <laughs> Herbal Dance, hello. Uh, so, um, yes, I'm not going to repeat everything I've just said, other than this is not planned at all, and we're going to see uh, what goes on. So, what I've got here is a very simple, quick bit of city, and you'll notice that I've got some red rectangles on the screen. If you've watched the video, you'll have seen uh, that you can sort of create bits of city. Um, quite easily. I'll just add some more stuff in, and it goes away and it, it paves itself as necessary. All, uh, all the stuff from the video. Uh, the code base that I'm working on is usually about two to three videos ahead of uh, what I've actually shown on YouTube. So you it won't look exactly the same, and there'll be a lot more stuff commented out and a few more bugs and things like that. Will this cover the AABB collision detection I've been scrambling for? Pixel, pixel, sun, sun. Uh, well, given that people have different uh, Twitch aliases to Discord aliases, I'm not sure. Are you on the Discord? Have you been nagging me on the Discord? You're not Cobalt, are you? Uh, anyway, uh, what I'm not going to be doing in this particular video, sorry guys, is talking about the intricacies of the collision detection algorithm. Uh, simply because I'm, my next YouTube video is going to be exactly that. Uh, and I don't want to just repeat the same stuff twice. So we're just going to have to take it as read that the collision detection uh, exists. Right, and as we can see here, I've got two, uh, well, I've got a car and I've got a building. Now, these buildings up here don't count, but as you just saw then, um, I've managed to get some sort of nice uh, collision detection 
going on. So I can't make the car uh, in any way enter the area occupied by the building. And if I just make the building disappear so we can see the outline rectangle a little bit clearer, I can uh, remember what the key was, the key is in that one, to reduce the buildings. So uh, I have uh, basically another layer of engine on top of what I'm doing. So I've got all the rendering stuff going on in the background, that's exactly what we saw in the YouTube videos, but on top of that now I have an additional engine just to handle the collision. Uh, so these two rectangles that we can see are my collision engine uh, so the outline, the boundaries of the collision engine. Now I'll try and try my hardest to make the car uh, enter that rectangle, but it won't do it. it I, I think uh, it's probably quite provable that it can't. Now, uh, I know some of you will think, oh, it's definitely going to be using separated axis theorem, isn't he, mate? Um, well, I'm not. Uh, I don't know if the algorithm I'm using exists. I don't know if it already has a name. Uh, I just thought of a a simple way to do it and it seems to work and it works for any convex polygon it doesn't have to be uh, rectangles nor do the uh, shapes have to have any sort of axial alignment either so even though the building quad on the bottom is clearly axis aligned it doesn't really matter uh, we can rotate that quite happily so it is a genuine polygon polygon uh, static collision solver and the car physics are quite dodgy obviously I've, I've not thought about the car physics just yet so what I want to do today is uh, I want to now make it so that all of the buildings can have collision response. So basically I've got this one collider object in that fixed location. Uh, I think I want to now expand it that I can load up the city that I've got and all of the buildings become collision. Now this is a little easier for me due to how I've decided to structure the city. Um, I don't need to search uh, for particular objects to check for collision. So as I'm driving... Oh, who we got? Uh, if it says uh, just subscribe like that, that's a subscriber on YouTube, not Twitch, so let's not get too excited. Um, so what was I saying? Uh, the buildings... Uh, blah, 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 start again. The collision detection here uh, is between the two objects. Now I don't need to search to try and find which objects do I can I potentially collide with. And the reason being is my city is a unit array. So each cell is one, two, three, four as we go along. So just by knowing the location of the car, I can immediately work out the locations of any potential objects that I can hit. So right now my intention is, is as the car is driving around, I will sample sort of the surrounding neighbours, which are all potential candidates for collision, and then uh, try and see what happens by just assembling a small list of things to collide with. As you can tell, it's all horribly unplanned. Let me just catch up with the chat a little bit. Unrealistic, not pixel perfect collisions. No, they're not pixel perfect in this instance. <coughs> ah, OLC Pixel, thanks for the follow, man. Uh, this looks so interesting. I wish you could say Cobalt. It's okay, don't worry about it. I can give up his following, thanks. <laughs> I don't think so. I think that's an optimistic uh, statement to make, Cyan. But thank you anyway. Uh, so, I think the first thing I want to do is to think about how am I going to store all of my uh, buildings. Because basically I'm going to dynamically create collision objects for things that are potentially things the car can crash into. So, obviously we're going to look at some code. Now, there'll be, there's a lot more code here than I've shown in the YouTube videos, uh, but there is one uh, particularly interesting part that I'm going to be working with today. Oh, I'll just show you one more thing before we get started. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, if I... Uh, you may have noticed uh, that when we zoom in, it's nice and textured, and as we zoom out, uh, the texture kind of disappears. So if I just put in uh, some roads, let's put in a loop of roads, and we'll put a, a building in the corner, a nice tall one. Wow, getting lots of follows all of a sudden. Uh, what I've implemented, and I'll be talking about this probably in the next YouTube video, is uh, a degree of MIP mapping. So before we were having all sorts of sampling problems as we were zooming in and out, but now uh, my MIPS aren't particularly at the right level and they're hard. So once the camera gets to a certain height, everything is MIPS the same. So we need to still work on that a little bit. But I think it does actually make the graphics look a bit smoother. Perhaps a bit too blurry uh, when you're that kind of distance. But it did start to fix some of the, uh, the more weird sampling errors as you were zooming in and out the city, particularly with the roads. Anyway.
Thanks, Sleeping Bear. We need planes. Well, we can probably put some planes in. Um, I'm hoping that we'll have a variety of different vehicles, and I'm hoping the community will at some point step forward with some low polygon models to uh, include in all of this. What did I want to show? I wanted to show uh, my sort of basic object that I've got for a physics sort of thing, the collision thing. And uh, it's a... Uh, it's not really physics, I suppose. It's just doing some uh, it's sort of the secondary layer of collision, this the secondary layer of rectangles and points. And I've called it a game object quad. And you uh, construct a quad with a width and a height. And it, it creates a quad centered around that uh, origin point. So the origin will be in the middle of the quad. And it just goes away and creates uh, four points. Now, to make this compatible with my 3D engine, uh, at some point I need to turn those four points into a pair of triangles for rendering. Uh, because what I'm trying to do here is I don't want to duplicate too many different things that all mean the same thing. So I've currently got a quad which represents the car, and I've got this section of four points which represents the car in physics world. And I'm more interested in using the car in physics world rather than graphics world, uh, simply because uh, physics world is where all the action happens, I suppose. So I've just had some convenient methods to convert from physics world to graphics world without much overhead. Uh, so if we wanted to render the car, which we do down here, uh, before we rendered the car by rendering its mesh, now I'm rendering the car uh, simply by calling the getTriangles function um, of that particular physics object, which, which gives me a mesh that's all translated and sorted out. Now the physics points all exist in world space, and that's slightly different from where they existed in graphics. In graphics we would do a transform uh, from around the origin into the world. We don't need to do that with the physics system. Right. I can do a building. Any, well, you know, a building is a, a nice rectangle with some textures on. Uh, I think a damage system is probably a little bit easier than you might think. Part of the output of the way that I do collisions, I will show you briefly my collision method, but I'm not going to go into any detail on it at all. In fact, that's how brief it's going to be. I don't usually like to collapse my functions, um, but it's not a long one. Uh, so all I'm doing is checking, is this object colliding with another object of the same type? And there's an option to say, well, just check if it's colliding, or try and resolve it at the same time. Uh, and I will save that for the uh, the video. Lots of disappointed people there. Right, so I've got two objects. Uh, one's going to be my car, that one's always going to exist, as are all of the other things in the game. Now I've also started to think about how can we get uh, lots of, let's say we've got a, a city full of traffic, how are we sort of working on all of the collisions between those? And I think I'm going to go with the idea so far that each cell in my city has some degree of ownership of the objects. So as the car is driving from cell to cell, it leaves one cell and becomes owned by the one next to it. And that way I can do the same local proximity search uh, for collision detection. So I don't need to go through every single object in the game. I think it's quite neat. Hi, Ben. <laughs> Have I got any mods in the chat at the moment, just in case? Oh, Gareth. Hi, I didn't see you there. Sorry, I missed that one. I need to make a mod. Uh, who's going to be a mod? Ah, my gets up and fisk though. That's good, they're mods, that's okay then. <clears throat> right, so I think to begin with I'm just going to create a vector of pointers, maybe. Let's go with that. And they're always going to sort of be locally generated depending on around where the car is. So maybe that's where I'll start. Uh, we'll position the car somewhere in space, and for that frame, we'll then try and work out where the uh, nearest solid objects are. Let's have a look. So we've done uh, here, we've worked out where the car is in space relative to one obstacle. I then want to test it against a few obstacles. So after we have positioned the car is then when I want to do the collision detection. Okay, uh, so I know in integer space where my car is quite easily. Oh, thank you for the follow, VTMR. Uh, for int, now where is my car? Vec carpos.x and carpos.y. Probably want to do that 
first. So I need to transfer the coordinates from graphics world into physics world. Uh, Geo is game object, by the way. <coughs> uh, it's more difficult to post memes on uh, on Twitch. I'll make tutors a mod. Okay. There you go. Didn't make me a mod during his stream. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's just uh, quickly create some convenience variables. So the uh, n car x, so this is the integer position of the car, uh, I'm just going to cast. And I'm only doing this just for visibility. Later on I can go away and optimize the code. And n car y. Now that will truncate the car to the nearest integer. So I want to check for the uh, cell behind the car in the x-axis and probably two cells in front. Let's assume I'm going to check a 3x3 three three grid uh, centered around where the car is. Uh, in which case I want to do for int x equals n car x minus 1 and I want you to go to uh, x is less than n car x plus 2 I think always get always gets a bit tricky when you've got uh, indexing going through zero I want to do the same for y I see I don't have the luxury of being able to cut and paste from code I've already done during these streams and periodically I stop to look at the chat Asking a mod is like asking dating a girl. I picked Jack because he was expected less of me. Jesus, are you drunk? Uh, I am kind of demonstrating collision. Uh, car physics is going to come later. <laughs> Been trying to think about car physics, and there's two ways to go about it. One is to do it in a reasonably realistic way, thinking about things like angular momentum, friction, uh, lateral friction, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm interested in doing it that way from a personal perspective. It's something that gives me an opportunity to learn about. But at the same time, it's actually quite complicated and could well end up being most of the code is centered on doing the car physics rather than just you know, making the car move forward. Uh, so I want to create a little temporary vector uh, of the game objects, uh, which we'll put in here. Uh, C game object quad. Uh, just to know uh, what are my neighbor what's in my neighborhood Vec neighbors we'll call it hash include well that was the problem I, I, as I was doing the calculations on paper I suddenly realized all I was doing was recreating box 2d right Let's add some things to the neighbors. So I want to create new game objects. Uh, I can just do it uh, in, in the constructor card. I just need to make sure I get the positions somewhat accurate. Right, vec neighbors dot pushback. Uh, C game object. Now its position is going to be, I have to think about this, it's a floating point now, again. Floating point of x, <coughs> excuse me, x plus 0.5 because the the origin of the square is not zero zero uh, it's zero zero is in the middle of the quad so I do want to offset it a little bit uh, x plus 0.5 and uh, just simply y point plus 0.5 as well I think Now, when I'm writing code at the moment, it's usually all a bit of a mess. It's full of typos, and that all gets sorted out before the, the video comes out. Uh, scene game object object. That's not good, is it? Quad. There we go. I'm too used to not using things like autocomplete. Uh, so we've created that. Got enough brackets, I think I have. Yeah. Uh, so we can push that quad back into our vector. Now, hopefully this will give us a 3x3 three three matrix of quads. And I think what will be useful to do before anything else is actually draw 
um, all of the quads which we're going to be testing against. So I think I'll iterate through this vec neighbors uh, vector down at the bottom and draw these obstacles. Uh, which is done here. So that was my original uh, drawing obstacle code. Uh, I'm just going to keep that there for the time being. Uh, for auto ob for obstacle vec neighbors. And I want something similar for each neighbor. I want to grab the triangles that it consists of. That reminds me, do I have to call a function? I can't remember. We'll find out when we draw it anyway. Uh, and we're going to get each ob, in this case it's not a pointer, it's just uh, the object itself. Get the triangles, draw the triangles for the obstacle with a red wireframe. Yes, the physics engine probably would be a series on its own. The If I treated the car as a single point, uh, that's that's accurate, but they don't turn very well if you treat cars like a single point. At some point, it, it has to have uh, like a fulcrum point, and, and that's the bit that I've been finding a little bit tricky to work with. I'll get there, though. Uh, right, let's just see what happens. It's probably going to crash, because I'm going to be trying to access things that are out of bounds, potentially. Oh, no. Okay. Well, that's not kind of the effect I was looking for. Something strange is going on there. It's cool though, isn't it? No idea. See, if I actually wanted to code that deliberately, I wouldn't know how to do it. Go to obstacles, reach ob. Let's go and have a look at where we're putting them into the array again. Uh, n car x, n car y, that's all fine. <laughs> what I'm making is uh, I want the city wide collision detection to be uh, working. x plus 0 0.5, y plus 0 0.5, what's going on? I've probably forgotten to uh, add some function that I should be creating. Um, so I create the game object, go obstacle. So my car is 0.4 units by 0.2 units. So if any of you are doing uh, any 3D models of simple cars, that's the size that it needs to be. Uh, one by one, so that seems fine. So what's going on? Vec neighbors, it added, added all sorts of weird neighbors to it, didn't it? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Cyan. It's really sort of two points that you want to do. Or model it as a tricycle. So you steer with a single point at the front, but still have two uh, rear wheels. Arcturus underscore. Thank you very much. First thing, you know, first stream of the year, 10 minutes into it, we've got a bug that I don't fully understand. So I'll have to sit and think about this for a second. I don't know why. Tell you what we'll do first, uh, just to make sure something is working as I expect. What I'll do is just push uh, straight away the car's location. We'll see if it comes up with the correct quad. So it's not going to do any collision detection. Uh, we're just going to see. Where it uh, where it draws this square. Now, now that's interesting. Oh, of course. I've been really, really stupid. I've ignored my own constructor entirely. Stupid Javid. Right, okay. Uh, what I've done here is I've assumed that the position was the parameters for the uh, constructor, and it's not. The uh, parameters for the constructor are merely the size of the object. So, I'll have to do things a little bit long-winded here. Let's take you out. Let's see, game, object quad, ob, and uh, we can just get rid of all of that. There we 
go. Um, we actually need to specify the position of where, where this is in space. <coughs> and it's that position is actually these two values. So we'll take you uh, and we'll just initialize you directly. Uh, what type was position? I can't remember. This is why you should use Hungarian notation. So anyway, the size of the object is simply one by one. Uh, pos is that and that. That seems okay. Uh, we'll just specify that. Oh, it's only height is zero. I think that's okay for pos. Is it? It's not going to shout at me. Uh, pos is a vec 3D. Now that's good. So it's got all of the information it needs. In fact, vec 3Ds oddly need a fourth parameter, uh, which is uh, omega. And vec neighbors, now we can push back the object. There we go. So let's try that. Well, we're not seeing sort of weirdness and things going on, but it does look like everything's sort of happening at the same place. Why is this? Stuck. You've made a car model. Let's have a look. Show your stuff. Um, it's certainly car in spirit. <laughs> it's quite high polygon, I think, for my game. <laughs> what I'll do is I will just pull that on to there so everybody can see. <laughs> you did you did play with cars as a child, right? Right. Uh, so I've still not sorted out what's going on here. Why have I only got one car? Uh, we're going for minus one. Uh, and we're going to zero, and then we're going to plus one, which is all uh, looks fine. Uh, X's and Y's are being incremented appropriately. We're adding the object; it's being initialized with its location uh, relative to the cells. But everything was appearing at zero zero. So have I done something stupid with my transform now at the bottom? I want to get the triangles. Ah, I am doing something stupid with my uh, thing at the bottom. I don't believe I'm ever calling, and I don't need to do it there. I can do it up here. So what's happening now, I believe, is that I've now established the model in the physics universe. Uh, I've lost my code already. There we go. I've established the model in the physics universe, but uh, it needs to be translated into the world universe, and so for that. I need to uh, call this function transform model to world. That's all it does. It doesn't take any arguments. And if we have a look at what this function is doing, oh, that just looks terrible on stream. So I'm going to go and actually have a look at it instead. Uh, uh, go to definition. Uh, so what this is actually doing is a combined um, rotation and translation uh, transform. I've, I'm not using matrices to do it. There's no real point if you can just get away with a couple of calculations. So it's just rotating according to the angle of the object in world space and uh, to the position of the object in world space. So if we don't do that, everything's created around the origin. So there we go. So now we've got a 3 by 3 grid of physics objects that follow the car. So I really only want to add these uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I really only want to add these to my vector if there's a building in the way. So if it's road or scenery, uh, I don't want to collide with that. I only want to put it there if we're if there is a building in the a corresponding cell. Well, I was expecting something maybe a little bit around the lines of 20 polygons tops for the car. And also, you know, this is this is a city based in this world, so we don't all race around in Formula One saloon cars. Well, Ben, if you've come to learn about how games are made, this is probably not the place. <laughs> this is how games are made very slowly with lots of confusion.
Uh, right, so now I want to check when I'm adding things to the vector, is there actually something in that location? Now this is one of the downsides to doing nice cleaner code for YouTube videos and having a horrible hacked back end to do all of your experiments is I can't remember what my variable names were called for a particular thing. <coughs> so I'm just going to have to familiarise myself uh, with my own code here for what did I actually call the map. That's what it was called, map with mouse world and in fact we'll just borrow that because we're going to we're going to mangle it. Uh, so I only want to do any of this if so if uh, p map and it's not n mouse world it's just y uh, map width is important and this one is just x so if any of that is equal to building that's when we want to add it to our object uh, sorry our vector of objects so let's try that Looks like everything is classified as building there. Ah, that's because I don't use a, a building flag, do I? I use height. I ditched the building flag for the video. Uh, so it's actually n height. So if its n height is greater than zero, that sort of implies it's a building, doesn't it? There we go. That looks a bit better. So we've not got a grid where we don't need one. So let's put in some buildings. So you're a building, and you're a building, and you're a building, you're a building. You're a building, you're a building, you're a building. Ah, oh, we can see that one's already got a red rectangle around. So what I should see now is we only see the rectangles appearing where the buildings are. Ah, the uh, original object, which I no longer render, is uh, is still there. Uh, so that's quite nice. And, and this has avoided the need to do sort of any complicated spatial partitioning in order to work out where we should test for objects. And that's because the city is very simply just a, a 2D grid. It does actually make doing things like this, any sort of uh, local Proxima searches, um, it, it makes them much simpler to do. Uh, I will remove now the original test object, which is stopping my car there. Uh, but I'll just comment it out. I never like to remove code uh, explicitly when I'm debugging things. Well, the buildings flown out, they have their own style, but what I'd quite like, I, I can envisage sort of a very sort of low polygon, most things with steeples, uh, warehouse style roofs with a simple texture. Uh, if the OBJ files start coming in and the texture files, the PNG files with them, um, it would be quite nice. Even though I, I went to some length to explain how we can do sort of stories, and, and I, I will talk about uh, texture transformations in order to make that simpler in a future video. Cheat and use Box 2D. Uh, I've used Box 2D. I've no problems with Box 2D. Uh, you know, it may even be the solution in this case, because I, there, there are certain things I want to talk about in this video that I don't want to get bogged down too much in, in physics, uh, but I, I, I don't know yet. I've not made those decisions. Right, so I've completely lost where I'm up to again. Keep getting distracted by the chat. So I've got my cars, now car, uh, and here we're testing it with the single obstacle, but of course the single obstacle is no longer valid. <coughs> now the thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is what happens when it collides with two obstacles at the same time. I've not actually tested that. Uh, so I probably want to now test everything that's in that vector. So again, we'll iterate through the vector. Auto, ob. Uh, vec neighbors. So we know that this vector only contains neighbors, uh, scenery neighbors that we can collide with uh, at this point. So I'm going to test uh, by each one in turn and I think I need to remember to do this, yes. So I'll explain why there's a little bit of, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of overhead code here. Uh, remember I'm translating first of all from uh, sort of uh, control world into physics world and any changes I make in physics world to the position or angle of the car I then need to update uh, into physics world so I can then extract those into graphics world so we've got quite a few different worlds going on. Now I'm going to test with each neighbor now the consequences of doing a static collision with a particular obstacle uh, in this case it's just going to be ob uh, this, if with this function here being uh, this, sorry, this argument being set to true, this is going to try and resolve that collision. Now, 
the way it resolves it might push it into collision with some other object. I'm, I'm not sure how well that's going to pan out yet, but we'll see. But because it can move the car, I then need to update the car's position again back in Graphics World. <coughs> and I also need to uh, calculate the Physics World transformations again too. Uh, simply because this function kind of breaks all of the rules of any sort of elegant programming design, it changes and messes around with these variables inside the car. So will that now on its own uh, start to test against the other uh, objects? Let's, I don't know, let's have a look, let's see what happens. I really like PhysX as a library. If you've not played with PhysX, it's one of the nicest written APIs I've ever used. For me, it was just incredibly intuitive. Uh, right, so let's put some buildings in. Uh, so you're going to be a building, and uh, you, yeah, let's just see if we can collide. No. I like to do it step, step by step just to make sure things kind of work. So that's good. So we've now got two objects that I can't collide with. Right, so let's put in a, another building there. So this was a, a concern that I had is, is what happens when you drive along the edges. Ah, good, it doesn't get stuck. That was uh, something I was really quite concerned about, what happens at that sort of pivot point in the middle. Nice, okay. Uh, so let's add in a corner now. So we'll add in another one there, and another one there, and another one there. Zoom back in so I can see what's going on. Uh, I'll zoom in really close just to show you can, there really is no overlap between the polygons. You, you just can't make it happen. So we're driving, driving, driving. And that's in collision with two different shapes now. And it doesn't seem to be complaining too much. That's quite nice. I'm pleased with that. I was a bit concerned. So there's other little weird things. So there's the car, if I just, because I can rotate the car on the spot like this, and if I sort of park it right up to a wall, and rotate it on the spot. See, it displaces the car uh, so it, it, it doesn't move. Now, obviously, that's something we're going to have to think about with the car physics because the car shouldn't be able to just move sideways. And I imagine if the player is driving down a street at high speed and smashes into a wall, we kind of want the car to straighten up rather than stay at an angle. But these, these will all be car physics things later on. Uh, so let's, uh, let's carry on. Uh, just sort of decorate this a little bit. Road, 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 road. In fact, I, I made some tools for this. So the trouble is my tools look very similar to these uh, selection rectangles. See? Uh, so let's put a road there, road, 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 road. Now, I will probably have to put some bound checks in on my get neighbor function, which I've not done yet. Uh, so I won't go too close to the edge if I can help it. Uh, we'll just change those to road. and. Uh, I will put, just to make sure that that can't happen then, I will block off this exit with um, some buildings. Building, building, we'll have a bit of grass there, building, building. Uh, I, I still use the uh, car as the camera. There we go. Ah, now that was a little mistake I've made, isn't it? It's detected the road there, but it, it hasn't. What I've inadvertently done is pressed the wrong key at the wrong time. So all of these uh, roads that I've just put down, if I toggle those off, we can see I accidentally turn them into buildings. So it's still detecting that there is a building there. So I'll have to uh, remove these. Uh, and I can do that by that is the first step. And then we'll pull you back. And now we'll put in our roads again. Road, there we go. So hopefully now I can still drive over them. I like the fact I can edit the city Ah, see, that's the that's an, another uh, corner case there. <laughs> Literally a corner case. Ah, fancy that. I'm just going to just read up some of the uh, chats. Are the collisions actually triangles, or is it just the drawing? Oh, hang on, I'll go a bit further back. Running something about physics. Yep, yep. I have experience with box two D. Uh, oh well, physics engine. I've never played with physics. Wasn't that the thing you could get a physics accelerator for? Originally, yes, it was, Gareth. Um, you could buy exclusively a physics uh, accelerator, but it, that they got bought by NVIDIA, or it was a subsidiary of NVIDIA, so it just got absorbed into their graphics cards. Ah, Lamber. Lamber? 
Lamber, hello, thank you for the follow. Uh, are the collisions shapes actually triangles or is it just the drawing? This is just uh, the drawing in this case because it's uh, my 3D engine uh, works fundamentally using triangles. So you can see the triangles, they change shape as they get towards the edges of the screen and that's the uh, dynamic clipping happening. So the actual shapes that are doing the collisions are genuinely polygons in this case. Two boxes and four cylinders with their faces removed. Now, you see, that's a bit better. That's the kind of thing I'm looking for. I'll just pull that onto the, uh, the screen. There we go. <coughs> well, I mean, we might be able to add some, you know, angles to them. And I'm also unsure whether even the wheels will be necessary. We're always looking at this from a top-down perspective. So any polygons that can't be seen, we should get rid of. Uh, I'm also not going to do things like animated wheels. That's that sort of thing. Okay, well, that's a little a little bit better. I'll give you a, a 6 out of 10. Bear in mind, nobody or anything ever gets a 10 out of 10. Oh. Uh, it's one lone physics engine. makes more sense. Sorry, I'm just catching up with the shouts. If the car is Mario, he gets pushed out two times because of the two walls. Yes, we shouldn't be able to rotate the car when stationary. We've, we've not done that at the moment. That's, this is just a, a convenience mechanism to allow me to test things. Uh, can we have a faster driving speed on the road and one slow? Yes, we'll definitely have that. Uh, I, I do intend to have different levels of uh, terrain. So there will be uh, grass, park spaces, uh, and and road, and I don't know, potentially gravel track, that sort of thing as well. It depends how big the city gets. Uh, ultimately, though, and the exciting part is, all of this will be incredibly moddable. So uh, it's I'm going to be embedding uh, Lua uh, so you can create objects and create your own uh, sort of properties of things. So if we wanted a truck, for example, uh, you'd have a lure object that represents the truck that would set its properties, its turning angles, its friction, its weight, uh, you know, all, all of that sort of information. So it's all going to be quite scriptable. Wait, you can go on the ocean. Yes, you can. Uh, maybe have buildings draw above roads to detect these errors. Not sure what Oh, oh, so yes, when I inadvertently put them, that's just down to me being clumsy. The yeah, the editing framework is incredibly basic at the moment. Doesn't see you're running in the I don't know. I'm going to just move it on a bit. If the building is more than one floor, there could be road under a building. Well, I want to make sure that uh, there's a priority between something being a road and something being a building with no scope for confusion. At the moment I'm using a very simple struct to, rep uh, to represent every cell. That's going to change. Uh, it will become a slightly more uh, complex structure. Uh, particularly because um, I want to add in navigation facilities so the user can uh, maybe find a GPS unit or a module at some point or buy one or something like that and it will be able to help them navigate around the map. In terms of non-player character car motion I've not really given that too much thought but I'm not going to be doing uh, anything like the cars don't have any sort of global AI that, that they're going to be in charge so a car's just going to move along and it's going to make a decision basically at every junction. And I've still not quite worked out how I'm going to do this yet because clearly you want them to stay on one side of the road. So it may be that I have to hard code uh, movements for each vehicle. The, the cars under NPC control will probably not be obeying any kind of physics engine at all uh, until they get hit by the player at which point they, they're no longer under control of the AI, the, the control will be switched directly over to the physics system. So if you hit a player car, it's just going to get knocked out of the way and, and just roll to the side of the road. So this means cars will probably spawn in and out of existence somewhere off screen. Uh, I don't want to do some sort of complex full city life simulation to sort that out. Uh, right, anyway, what was I doing? I wanted to place a few more buildings uh, just to try and finish this off, so we'll have one there, uh, one big one there, and we'll fill this area with buildings. Very nice. Good. Uh, at the moment, the debugging information, uh, the red rectangles and things, uh, they're, they're useful to just make sure everything is doing what we expect it to do. Um, but i probably very quickly get rid of them, or at least make it an option to toggle those sort of things on and off. Now, because this is arbitrary polygon uh, 
uh, collision resolution. I should point out it is only static collision resolution. There is no dynamics, so that it won't bounce off the off the wall or anything like that yet. It's purely just to stop things from overlapping. But it's a, as you can see, it's quite a performant method. It, it doesn't really have any knock-on effects. I'm quite pleased with it. I suspect it isn't original, although um, I did try to calculate it from first principles. Uh, so I imagine it does exist somewhere, I just don't know what it's called. <coughs> well, the, I'm going to use uh, Herbal Dance. I want to use the... Oh, Gorbit! Hi! Sorry, I didn't see you there. Hello! Um, I want to use Lua to sort of allow the modding framework. So missions will be scripted through Lua. All of the assets will be defined by Lua, that sort of thing. Uh, do you plan to add a map in the corner? Uh, yes, probably, most likely, yes, I'll add something like that. Um, but I also want to add in uh, a GPS system. Uh, what happens if you're placing a building on yourself? Can you glitch? Oh, well, that's a really good question. Let's find out what happens uh, if you place a building on yourself. Because I don't know what's going to happen, I'm going to go into a safe zone. So, place a building. Ah, so yes, the car really didn't like being in the building. Um, the system decided to sort it out. Oh, doesn't mind that one. Oh, yep. Yeah. So as soon as I moved, it resolved itself. Try and box it in again. So all I'm going to do is slightly turn the car. That's okay. Let's cross the threshold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can understand why that's the case, given how I'm resolving the collisions. It certainly detects that the car is inside the building, because uh, that's how when I was first testing, I was just seeing if things were overlapping before I started to resolve them statically. All right, Ben, see you later, man. Now, automatic map generation is possible, uh, but it's a little bit beyond the scope of the video I want to do today, uh, and probably for this series. Uh, the only way I would do automatic map is probably do something like I did with the saving sedit uh, entry. I, I would create some sort of labyrinth and then populate it with buildings. Speaking of which, I want to test this on a bigger city now. Now, in the video that was released uh, last weekend, I actually cut out about 20 minutes worth of video because it was already long enough and it was an hour when it when it went out. And one of the things I cut out was the ability to uh, load and save models. Uh, so I'm going to add that back in. So I'm just going to pull up sort of the uh, the code from the video. Let me just try and find that for a minute. I'm looking at a different screen, of course. Uh, one lone coder, what was it called? What was it called? I don't use GitHub on my desktop, by the way, so everything isn't where you might expect it to be. Uh, what did I actually what did I call the uh, the, vid uh, the video? I can't remember. Pixel game engine. Dun, 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 dun. Car crime city one. There we go. Oh yes, yes. The map will be based upon whatever edits you have created. So, uh, it's drawing drawing a map is is not uh, one of the most difficult things to do here. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's yeah. I think uh, Rodis, you're absolutely on the ball. There, uh, um, there, there are some some things I'll never get this finished, uh, given that I'm I'm mostly doing it on my own. Um, if I if I went down trying to perfect everything to make it like Grand Theft Auto, the things I want to achieve uh, are specifically the I want to keep the rendering frame rate high so that's going to introduce various topics about optimization I want to talk about these collisions I want to talk about automatic navigation and I want to talk about mission structure within the game um, and then hopefully the community can just take on and, and f flesh it out with more missions and a plot so I will have things like uh, a little character running around potentially with a gun uh, that can steal uh, any vehicle that's on the map. They're, they're the things I want to try and implement. Uh, right, I'm just looking for two functions that I created. Now I'm hoping that between these two versions the, the city definition is the same. If it's not, I'm going to have to make it the same. So I've got two functions which are for saving and loading the city. Which uh, were included in the code released with the video, but not actually discussed uh, because they're reasonably trivial. They, they, had, to, they had to get cut. 
so I can save and load the city, but let me just make sure that my city uh, cell struct is the same, or else it's just not going to work. So we have height, world X, road, <coughs> excuse me, and building. What we don't have is selected. That's gone. So they're exactly the same. And now I want to pull in just the key controls to allow me to load and save the maps. There we go. Getting quite a few key controls now. Ah, Pixel Player 14. Thank you for the follow. Thank you. Uh, right, example city. So F8 is load the city. Now, this could be a horrible mess if, if nothing's quite the same. We'll check. Uh, I'm also not entirely sure uh, where's a safe place to load the city with the car, but we'll have a look. Uh, F8. So there's the city that I. Uh, this is so sort of the first city that I've created. Uh, big city, that is. So this was the city that I showed in the video. Now we can drive around. We can see where is it looking for collisions. So that seems to be working quite nicely. Let's zoom in. So it should now be the case that it's actually quite a robust way to navigate around the city. Uh, these blue areas, these are going to be like buildings, but the other way. So there's, there's actually going to be some depth here uh, with a layer of water on, and the water will reflect a sky. That's what I've got in my head, at least. Uh, so that it won't just sort of be uh, immediate water tiles. There, there will be uh, a, a wall uh, looking more further down. So everything's raised above the water a little bit. I'll try and smash into some buildings. And I can't. Just have a quick catch up with the chat. How about driving into corners? Okay, well, let's uh, have a look. So the, these external corners, I, I can't, I can't make it happen. Uh, and the internal corners so I kind of get the car sort of right up against it yeah no it is it's uh, I think uh, mathematically it's not viable for it to be uh, corruptible unless as we just saw the car uh, is deliberately placed inside the object and then I think uh, we start seeing some weirdness uh, probably due to some things appro approaching zero I guess yeah it is it's it's nice and solid and as I, I can't lay claim to it because I'm not entirely sure if it's original I don't know if it's if it's I've come up with some unique way of doing uh, this sort of collisions I'm, I'm guessing it's not I believe it's quite trivial um, but I it could have an existing name or acronym to describe it I don't know uh, if it does. I'm not searching through loads of research papers. I did start out with a separating axis theorem, so the next video uh, that I'm doing, which I'm going to talk about this collision detection, will have a brief look at separating axis theorem and the differences between the two, because under some quick profiles that I did, uh, it does seem that this method is, well, I think we calculated almost 30 times faster than separating axis theorem. I put those results, they're in a video somewhere in Show Your Stuff on the Discord. Migs the Just, hello! Physics are fun, we had a bug in our VR game where if you touched a certain collider but not another it didn't behave correctly. Physics are always fun and it's weird because in my experience of using actual physics engines for simulations and things at university uh, the, the numbers you put in to try and make it feel real are nothing like the numbers you would use in reality. Okay, well, that seems quite nice. Ah, so there you can see the MIP mapping working quite nicely now. Maybe it's a little bit blurred. I might need to, to readjust the MIPs.
So I guess it, there's also potential now to start adding other interesting objects. Perhaps I could add artificially uh, some additional cars to the map. Oh, Dragon Eye, hello. Give up. Okay, man. Have a good night. See you later. I'll keep the debug information on the screen for now, just because it's quite useful. Yeah, I think my, my mipping levels are a bit too strong. But for a software renderer, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the, the performance of it. And you, there's, no, uh, there's no hardware problems. So people that deal with GPU-based uh, programming will know that you should try and batch things and that you need to organize all of your textures so everything is optimal in how you communicate with the graphics card. When you've got a CPU render, it really doesn't matter. You can just sort of throw anything at it in any order. You know there's no consequence to doing so. Uh, do I do it on the... Oh, sorry, I'll catch up. Could you put a couple of cars on like a car crash at an angle and see if a collision section still works? That's a good, that's a good test, Gareth. Yes, yes, we'll do that. Uh, and the next one, do you do it on the sides as well? Seems sharp on the building edges. Uh, do you mean, yes, the, the, the mipping is, is applied to all textures brute force. So you can see at that level, uh, well, maybe you can't on the Twitch stream, uh, but that's, that's quite blurry as compared to down here. So uh, the, the mipping is, is global in this case. I have a single texture which is applied to the whole city. And it's, uh, I'm not doing any sort of in interesting blending between MIP levels either, which is something else that we could do. So you don't just sort of see it chunk from one, one level to the next. So I think we'll go with Gareth's idea, and we'll add uh, some additional cars to the scene. And we'll just do it manually for now. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, right, where do I want to do this? I want some more game objects. Game objects. Go car. So I'm going to keep the player car... Uh, specifically all the time like that and well, uh, uh, as a separate variable I think that's probably quite a useful thing to do uh, but we'll have uh, a small vector of other cars this is probably how we'll start doing other cars uh, generally in the game anyway so we'll do exactly the same thing uh, and don't need them to be pointers anymore really so this is going to be vec uh, we'll call it traffic for now because I think on the whole, as I mentioned earlier, I'm only going to really do car stuff uh, locally. Maybe a few cells beyond the edge of the screen. I'm not doing it for the whole map. Benedani, yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm, I'm not doing any sort of uh, clever calculation. Right now, all I did was choose four threshold levels, and that's when it changes MIPS. Uh, so there's been no tuning at all on that. Oops, I'm moving the wrong windows around. Uh, so we'll create a vector called vec traffic, and to that I'm going to add uh, some objects which are going to represent cars. And I'm just going to hard code these in uh, because I don't know if Gareth has seen uh, sort of ang I think everybody wants to sort of see the collision detection work at angles and uh, watch it not work at angles, and it'll be horribly embarrassing. And I'll you know that'll probably coincide with the end of the stream. Uh, so go obstacle. That's uh, not doing anything particularly relevant, but we want to add some cars now. Uh, right, so uh, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Uh, game object quad, car 1, and the cars, I want, we'll keep them all the same size, 0 0.4, 0 0.2. Oh, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put in one big car as well, why not? Although the texture will look a little bit wrong. So we'll have three cars, and one of them we'll have as a truck. It'll be twice as long. Uh, so, remembering this time what to do, uh, we also need to specify the position of the cars somewhere in the world. Uh, I'll just borrow this code to do that. So for car1, car1.pos, uh, your position is going to be, and I, I'm never going to get these aligned with the road, so I'm just going to pick some uh, arbitrary locations. So we'll pick you to begin with at 3f. Uh, and you're going to be at 3F, yeah, why not? And we'll also set your angle, car1.angle. Uh, so we'll have you at, at it, won't be a, it won't be axis aligned, not 0.2. Uh, it's in radians, of course. And car1.transform uh, model to world, we may as well call that now whilst we've done it. 
and we'll add that to our vector of traffic. Push back car one. So let's do something similar for the others. Uh, this one is car two, and this one is car three, and your car three, and your car two. Uh, so we'll position you at five five. At least then we know they're not overlapping, and we'll give you a different angle, uh, one point. Four. Is that right? Is that a good number? 1.4. And the truck, uh, the truck will have at, uh, we're in radians, so I don't know, 4.3. And we'll position the truck at uh, W, we'll go over to 6 and 3 again. Why not? Uh, so I've got three cars in my vector of traffic. So now, as well as testing against the buildings, I now need to test against uh, the vector of traffic. Now, I could be really clever here and do some interesting vector manipulation so it does all of the tests at the same time. But right now, I'm just getting a feel for it. I'm just going to brute force it. So uh, for uh, auto, we'll call it vehicle. Maybe uh, vec vehicles would be better than vec traffic. I don't know. Uh, vec traffic. So for each vehicle, uh, we're going to test. I'm doing this in the wrong place, aren't I? Yeah. So we'll test with buildings first. Now, see, that's an interesting question. You kind of want to test against one before the other because you could hit test against a building and that resolves the collision, which then pushes you into a car. But then once you've resolved the collision with the guitar, uh, with the guitar, with the car, it pushes you back into the building. Well, I never really want to go into buildings, so that's going to be my secondary step. I don't really mind if cars overlap a little bit. Uh, so I'll do uh, do the cars first. And I think it's just exactly the same. So this time it's vehicle. All the same. And we'll need to render the other vehicles as well. So that's the main car there. Uh, we've got our, so that's just our mesh to draw which uh, which uh, buildings we're potentially looking at. Let's also render the other vehicles. And I'm going to render the other vehicles before I render the car. Uh, just so the player car is kind of always the last thing drawn, I think. Uh, so uh, auto vehicle in VEC traffic. I'm just going to steal this code. It's okay. Uh, don't want to rent. Yeah, we'll render the bounding boxes as well, just so we can see what's going on. So I want to steal all of that. Uh, tries car. This time is uh, obstacle. I oh, say it's vehicle. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, vehicle. We want to enable alpha blending. To enable alpha blending, we render the mesh, we render the external mesh, and then we draw the normal car. So let's just see if we're somewhere on the right track. Well, there's our vehicles. Let me just catch up with the chat. I know it's all very exciting. Do you want the size? MIP levels, we've talked about MIP levels. Is zoom level going to be fixed? Uh, zoom level, I'm. what I'm thinking of doing is taking the average height, well, so the maximum height of the, of a surrounding radius of buildings. And so the camera will smoothly uh, elevate uh, and de-elevate depending on that. So, and, and it also might also be a factor of how fast the car is going as well. So um, the idea being is if, if you're driving really quickly along the road, you probably want to see what's coming up so you can make decisions. That will be a bit of gameplay tuning, so that'll probably be some coefficients that I throw into the Lua file. I, on the whole, I don't think the player needs to manually zoom in this. Uh, right now, in edit mode, it's quite convenient. Alexi32, hello. No, this is uh, C++. Select a symbol, Control R R. You can rename the symbol. I barely know any of the uh, uh, shortcuts. 
Uh, where would everybody in here go to learn modern C++? I know some C and work in C Sharp day to day, so I can read all of this, but need to learn to write it. <laughs> I, You know what? I, I've said this to many, many people. I don't really think it matters what language you do these things in. You can learn syntax in a couple of days, as long as you as long as your algorithm thinking is 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 up to scratch, you'll be all right. I think uh, anybody that can program well in C sharp can probably program equally well in C plus plus. And I know you'll get the people moaning at you saying, "Oh, you're in C plus plus, you've got to handle your memory." Um, well, yeah, you do. Just get on with it. Uh, right. So we want to see what happens when we collide with these cars. So here we've got some additional. Ob obstacles. Now, that was our truck, so this was our long obstacle. Let's have a look. Zoom in. Ah, Dandy McGee. Hello. Thank you for the follow. So this will, obviously the texture is elongated because uh, I've made the shape larger, um, but that looks like our truck. And, yep. Yeah. I mean, because the, the, there is no sort of physics happening, sometimes the static resolution uh, looks a bit strange. Uh, particularly if you try and do rotations on coins, you get sort of faster actions. But uh, before you can do any kind of dynamics, you need to make sure your physics model is accurate. Uh, you can't do realistic physics simulations if your model is already breaking the laws of physics. So the first thing to do is make sure you don't have things that are overlapping. Uh, so here is a, another car. Same sort of thing. Can't seem to uh, get them to interfere with each other. I've lost the other one. There it is. That seems I, I'm I'm pleased with the robustness of that. Ooh, lots of uh, lots of things to catch up with. I think I remember moving the camera a bit in front of the actual car. That's uh, that's that's something I hadn't considered. Yeah, perhaps uh, we we become direction sensitive. Crally one hundred and one video tutorials for C plus plus are heavily discouraged. Oh, not on this channel, <laughs> but I do know what you mean. Uh, I just fancy learning the syntax of this and Rust. Well, uh, we've certainly got a Rust fan on the Discord server. There's 2,000 of us. I think one of them likes Rust. Uh, Stuxel Dude, why is Visual Studio so slow and clunky? More than half the features in it useless to me. I wish I could have said, well, I'm, I'm hopefully demonstrating here. I mean, I'm not a Visual Studio advocate or fanboy. I do use it, but it doesn't really appear slow and clunky to me. <laughs> Yeah, just just get on with it. Windows 7 users, I think C++ will have a bit more complication when comparing to other languages. Uh, yes and no. Uh, if, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's just syntax. It takes a couple of days to learn syntax, doesn't it? Having played with Rust, you love it. <laughs> C++ looks fun. Well, there's odd people who wants to learn to manage my. Well, I I come from a, a background of needing to manage my own memory. I I do embedded systems for a day job, uh, so working with memory isn't something that frightens me. Uh, right, let me just throw in some buildings as well here, uh, just to see. Uh, now I don't know where my grid is, so I think we're going to have truck in building. Now, of course, the NPCs are not. Uh, we'll, we'll 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 actually use that and try to see what happens with the collision there. Uh, the NPC vehicles. Uh, don't do any collision detection with the scenery. I can't remember which was my car now, that one. Uh, so, uh, we'll zoom in. Let's get a good close look. So we've got a nice horrible sort of concave section going on there. I see now, see it popped. Like that, there we go. And that's because the solution to solving that problem probably involved one of the buildings pushing the car into uh, an invalid space on one of the other objects. But I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, I, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I think that the, as far as collision goes, it, it's it's sufficient. We can probably cosmetically do something about that anyway. Uh, I'm not doing any time slicing. Uh, because I'm not implementing any physics at the moment, it's purely static resolution. So if given that, there are no actual physical constraints on how it can go about solving the problem. Uh, so it can displace the car sideways if necessary, which is obviously something a car can't do. A car wants to roll on its wheels. Let's go and have a look at this one up here. So again, we've got a, a slightly con oh, 
zoom the wrong way, slightly concave object. I'll try and collide with it. My driving's not very good. So there's one thing that maybe I might want to tidy up is actually make the bounding boxes slightly smaller than the, the real world geometry. So when cars do hit each other, it physically looks like they've hit each other. Yeah, I have to think about that a little bit. But today I wanted to sort out scenery collisions and get them somewhat performant and I'm quite happy with the progress that's been made there. Thank you LimePixel. Alexander, hello. Spaghettified car. <laughs> Right, uh, well, I think that's it for me. Um, I don't know if anybody else is streaming. I mean, we'll c carry on chatting for a little bit, but if anybody else is streaming, I'm happy to uh, to pass pass on the audience. Thank you very much, everybody that's come to watch. There's a, a big number tonight. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, so it's only going to be it's only a little short stream because now what I want to do is go and working on car physics, and I don't really want to do that on stream because I need to do it on pen and paper, and I don't think that'll be a particularly interesting video. Are you not streaming tonight, Gareth? Okay. Um, if, if you've not checked out Gareth's stream, check out Gareth's stream. I, I discovered Gareth inadvertently on Reddit, I think, because he has an interesting icon. Uh, I don't know if he looks like that in real life. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Herbal Dance. Uh, so uh, that's been uh, sort of dynamically finding which elements of the scenery uh, to collide against. I'm happy that that's working well. I'm now going to go and work on it's probably some car physics next and probably object loading and starting to think about the Lua framework for the next video. I'll be doing a video specifically about this method of collision detection. Uh, it'll be the next YouTube video that should be out next weekend. Uh, and so in the meantime, thank you everybody and take care.